Hey, 252 kids. Hey, doesn't this look like a lot of fun? You know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, being upside down, how life is kind of upside down now, and so I kind of, I kind of wanted to go with a, a set video kind of that reminds us that, man, things are kind of upside down right now. Because they are. Um, you're, being, you're at home a lot. That's kind of upside down from what it usually is, isn't it? School is kind of upside down. You're not in the classroom, you know, at school you're at home doing doing class. And maybe for some of you that's not upside down, but for a lot of you that is. Um, there are so many things that are upside down right now. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit more about something else that's upside down, and that's humility. And we've been talking all this month about humility. That's our life app for this month. You know, we call it a life app, and I like to review this with you uh, every once in a while. But we call it a life app because whenever you, um, you know, whenever you get your parents' phone, you know, you're not just like staring at the phone. No, you open it up and you look for an app that you want to use. You know, maybe it's a game, maybe it's a, uh, maybe it's YouTube for kids or something like that, or uh, I don't know. Um, but you open that up, and that helps you get to what you're wanting to do. In the same way, in the same way, we talk about life apps um, through our time here in 252 because those life apps, they help us, they help us get to the things that we need to do. Because, you know, in a song that you guys, if you guys did, um, if you guys went through the treehouse, you probably sang a song called, Who Knows Best? God Knows Best. He knows what's best for me. And guys, all of these things that we talk about here in 252, they're things that you can find in God's Word. And guys, God knows what's best for us. Anyways, this month we're talking about humility. And humility is this, putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Humility is um, a really, really big deal, but it seems so backwards to the thing, uh, to how life usually goes, okay? And so, right now, <laughs> I need you guys to help me out. We're gonna do some stuff. You're gonna do some stuff at home, and I want you guys to help me out with this, okay? So here's the thing. Um, how many of you guys are good basketball players? How many of you guys can, can just shoot all day long and just make it? Make, 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 make. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, hopefully, if your parents saw the video, uh, they have gotten together a laundry basket or some, a basket of some sort and some wadded up um, pieces of paper. Here in the next little bit, I'll tell you when, you are going to try and see how many pieces of paper you can make throwing behind your back. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. How many of you guys have really, really neat handwriting? Uh -huh. A lot of you. Really neat and really, really creative handwriting. I've seen it. It is so cool. You guys are so creative. I want you guys uh, to grab the piece of paper that your parents have set out, or if your parents haven't set it out, that's alright. You can just go grab a piece of uh, paper and a pen, um, and I want you guys to write your full name. Here's the catch. <laughs> it's not that easy. I want you guys to write your full name with your opposite writing hand. So if you're right-handed, I want you to write with your left. Huh? How about that? Okay, now here's the other fun one. How many of you guys like to uh, take a drink of water? Okay. Um, now, some of you guys, um, <laughs> or drink anything, um, some of you guys you know, can just get a glass of water from the sink or whatever. Um, but here is the thing. How many of you guys ever poured um, your favorite drink out of a bottle into a cup? That'd be too easy for this time. I want you guys to do the opposite. And so if your parents have that set out for you, I want you guys to have a bottle right there. It should be empty. And I want you guys to try pouring a glass of water back into the bottle. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Hopefully there's a towel there to help you clean up. If you have to set that up, now would be the time to go and grab that stuff. So go ahead and uh, hit pause. And I'll put a timer on here and you guys can uh, just go with it, okay?
perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. Humility can seem so backwards. But as you're gonna see here in just a little bit, and I'll outline how this is gonna look, um, here in a little bit, you're gonna see that sometimes, sometimes things can seem backwards and they can seem upside down, but only because we don't know, um, we don't know the whole plan. We don't know what's going on. We don't know the, the whole idea of the, of the plan for the day. Speaking of plans for the day, here's what's gonna come up. Uh, so I'm gonna exit screen left, maybe screen right, I'm not sure. It's screen left for me. Uh, so maybe it's screen right for you. Um, and uh, you guys are gonna see Lawson and uh, he is going to uh, kind of talk about, you know, one thing. After that, we're gonna have our lesson I'm gonna teach today. And then after that, we'll have a couple of songs. And um, guys, I hope that you'll uh, have a great morning this morning or whenever you're watching this. Maybe it's a good afternoon. Maybe it's a good evening. Whichever way, I hope that things are going well for you. Let's pray and then I'll hand you off to Lawson. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day and I thank you for these kids. Lord, I thank you for uh, teaching us about what is the best way for us to live. I praise you for everything that you do and for even having all of this stuff happen. Lord, I ask that you would help us just to trust uh, because, Lord, we know that we can depend on you because we can trust you uh, no matter what. And so, Lord, uh, we praise you. We just ask this all in your name. Amen. And I work so hard to bring you amazing stories that I think I deserve some updates to my contract. Lawson, you don't have a contract. But see, that's the problem. I mean, I mean, Taylor gets Ben and Jerry's in her green room. Kanye requires pistachios and hot sauce. And Will Ferrell, Will, Will Ferrell, Will Ferrell gets one fake tree on wheels. Okay, why would you want a fake tree on wheels? That's not the point. Anyways, before we finalize my contract, I've got an awesome story you should hear. Let me introduce the birthday boy, Sam. This year, mom said Sam can plan whatever he wants for his whole birthday day and invite three friends. He spent two whole months planning it out, down to the last detail. Donuts for breakfast, topped with bacon and ice cream. After that, they're gonna go play mini golf. Sumo wrestling style. While shouting, Geronimo. Then it's pizza for lunch with pepperoni so spicy, the pizza bites back. Then it'll be time for an epic battle of manhunt in the dark while Sam shouts, freedom. Sam knows he's gonna have the most amazing birthday ever! But then the day before Sam's birthday, his friend Noah sprains his ankle while doing the hamster dance and tripping over his hamster. There's no way Noah can do all the stuff Sam's planned. So Sam plans to invite this cool kid, Jin, instead. Cause then Jin might invite Sam to his party. But then Sam thinks about how lonely Noah will be with his mom feeding him healthy foods and making him play math games. Ugh. Sam decides to give up his perfect day and announces, we'll take the party to Noah. And even though they can't do the cool stuff Sam planned, they still have a blast taking over the world and eating the world's best pizza. Birthday pizza! So kids, Never dance the hamster dance with your hamster. But do remember that humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. You know what, I could go for some pistachios, but I probably don't need a fake tree on wheels. Yeah, that'd be pushing it. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.
Hey, I'm back. All right, so I'm kind of excited because, man, this is the first time in like a month and a half that I get to teach. And so, guys, I've missed this. I've missed being with you guys. I've missed seeing you guys and smiling and joking around with you and uh, playing games, you know, back in the back and seeing you guys, you know, have fun with your small group leaders. But you know what? that hasn't stopped us from learning about the Bible, or at least I hope that it hasn't. Uh, today, today, uh, I hope, uh, this is gonna be kind of a little bit different, um, but today, I hope that you guys are able to take a look at the Bible, and you guys are able to read uh, some scripture uh, to, uh, maybe to yourself, maybe to the other people in the room, I don't know, but I hope that, that is the case. Okay, so let's review really quick what we've been talking about this month. Okay, so we've, we've been talking about humility and we've been talking about, you know, there is nobody else that we can learn better from than Jesus, okay? And last week, you know, we talked about Philippians chapter 2. And Philippians chapter 2 is just this amazing section of scripture that tells us about, you know, Jesus, he gave up the most amazing things. You know, he gave up heaven so he could be here with us. It would be like, you know, for those of you guys who were doing the, the backwards, you know, basketball toss thing, um, it would be like if I gave you a candy bar as a reward for that, and then later on, I was like, hey, actually, would you like to exchange your candy bar for a worn out sock? <laughs> it would be difficult, huh? It would be like that for Jesus to give up heaven to come down here with us, and yet he did because he loved us. And guys, we learned two weeks ago on Easter that Jesus, he died for us because he loves us. He put us first over himself. And he not only died for us, but he rose from the grave. And guys, that was amazing. Well, today, today, guys, not only did Jesus show us the true example of humility and prove that he really was God's son, but today we get to see what happened you know, right after that. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, so Jesus, he gets crucified and he's put him on the cross, you know, bang, bang. And they, they took him down from the cross, you know, after he had died and they put him in this tomb. And three days later, he rose from the grave. And, you know, they, they put this huge, gigantic stone over the, over the mouth of the grave and it rolled away. And Jesus was, he, he was gone. He was out of the tomb when people came to investigate, when people came to see, you know, what was going on. Well, after Jesus came uh, back, after Jesus resurrected, um, two of his followers, a guy by the name of Clopas, and we don't know the name of the other guy, you can read about this in Luke chapter 24. In fact, I hope that you have your Bibles already open to that uh, spot in Scripture. But here's what we learn. We learn that Jesus... Uh, or that these two guys, Clopas and this other guy, they are walking uh, away from Jerusalem to this, uh, this little uh, town kind of thing uh, called Emmaus, okay? And so they're walking to Emmaus. This is a big trip for them, okay? They didn't have cars, they didn't have bikes, uh, they didn't have motorcycles, they didn't have any, they didn't have planes, uh, anything like that. It was like seven miles. Uh, to put that into kind of perspective, it'd be like walking from, uh, from New London to Mount Pleasant and even into Mount Pleasant a little bit, okay? Seven miles. This is a big trip, all right? And they're walking. And so as they're walking, it's uh, Clopas and these two guys, and they were just talking, and man, there has been so much that has happened. These guys were followers of Jesus, and there's been so much that has happened over the last three days. You know, you imagine, uh, so much has happened over the last week. Um, just seven days before this, you know, Jesus had entered into Jerusalem, you know, on the back of this donkey and people were waving, you know, they were waving uh, palm branches and they were waving all of this stuff and they were so excited for Jesus to be there. They were so excited, they were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of David, Hosanna. And they were, they were just so excited, they thought that Jesus was going to be king. And my goodness, guys, Clopas and his friend, you know, they were just trying to figure this. They were really, they were reliving the events. You know, they were remembering everything that had happened over the last week. And what the Bible tries to get across to us is they're trying to figure out where things went wrong. Okay, and we know, you know, from from seeing, uh, from from um, 
looking at things a couple weeks ago, you know, Jesus, he was up in this upper room, he had his last supper with his disciples, with his 12 closest followers, his 12 closest friends, and, man, and then they went to the garden, and then Jesus is betrayed by one of his closest friends, and then he gets put on the trial, um, he gets put on trial not only by you know the the people who were in charge of Israel, but by by people who should have known better better by by these religious leaders, and eventually you know they, he gets taken to the cross. And the Clopas and his friend they're tr they're discussing all of this stuff and they're trying to make sense of it and they're they're trying to make sense of what has happened that Jesus he's been crucified he was supposed to be the Messiah what happened? And they're just walking. And they they are so you know involved in conversation, and they don't even realize that this other person has come up alongside them. Now, Luke, you know the author, the guy who wrote this whole thing down, um, and, and we think that that Clopas is telling Luke this story, and Luke has written it down, and Clopas, you know, he is sure to to tell Luke we didn't we didn't know who he was, but this other person joins them, and and starts to ask them, you know, what are you guys talking about? And, and Clopas, uh, he's just like, dude, where have you been? Are you the only person who doesn't know what just happened over the last couple of days? Are you the only one? Are you, are you, are you not aware of what is happening? <laughs> and they explained to him, they explained to him who Jesus was, and they're like, he was a great prophet, you know, mighty in word, mighty in deed. You know, uh, he did all these great things, and they're trying to explain to him who they thought Jesus was. And Jesus, you know, he, he pretends that he doesn't know who they're talking about. He just lets them kind of go on. And it's kind of really interesting, you know, that they're the ones who think that Jesus doesn't know what's going on. Uh, but Jesus, really, in all, in all fact, he knows that they don't know what's going on. It's kind of interesting to me. Anyways, um, guys, I don't want to tell the whole story. And so just for a couple of minutes, just for a couple of minutes, I'm going to pause, okay? And I want you guys to read to each other. This is Luke chapter 24, verses 19 through 24. And I want you guys to read that to each other. So go ahead and uh, either ask your parent to press pause or go ahead and press pause. And I want you guys to read this conversation to each other. If there is more than one of you in the room, I want you guys to uh, pass the Bible to each other and let someone else read. Uh, help um, your younger brother or sister read and uh, help them kind of uh, help each other out. Okay, so press pause. Time back in. So, guys, <laughs> um, here's the funny thing. They're telling Jesus about Jesus, right? Now, here's the thing. Jesus, he um, kind of interrupts them, right? And he kind of tells them about, you know, this is actually, you guys, uh, you guys didn't even know. And he starts over and he tells them about who he is, about who Jesus is, starting all the way at the very beginning. Now guys, we started all the way at the very beginning too, all the way back in August. We started talking about Genesis and, and we started talking about how God created the world and everything in it. And then we talked about Abraham and we talked about Noah. We talked about all of these great, big, huge characters, all these great, big, huge people that you learn about in the Old Testament. And now we've come here. And you can imagine that Jesus, he's doing the same thing. You know, they have plenty of time. Um, some of the people that I was reading about, they think that this this whole um, this whole journey uh, probably took about like three hours. And so Jesus, he's telling them about about this. He is he is he is opening the whole Bible to them, and what what it actually means, what it's pointing towards. And he's pointing and he's proving to them that, that, that he had to, that Jesus had to, the Messiah, the King, um, he had uh, to be born and he had to suffer and he had to die. And he's trying to remind them about this. And so guys, here's, here's kind of what happens, okay? 
here's what happens. They arrive at Emmaus. And because it's kind of late afternoon, and maybe the next town was quite a bit further, and it wasn't really a good idea to travel at night, you know, or in late afternoon, you know, these, these Emmaus, or um, Clopas and his friend, they invite Jesus, you know, they, they still don't know who, who he is, they invite him to stay with them, to have a meal with them, and just to stay the night. And so Jesus, he agrees. And they sit down, and what's really kind of interesting is that they invite Jesus in, and yet Jesus, you know, they sit down at the table, and they're sitting down, and, and Jesus, he takes the bread, you know, that they had, which was something that, you know, a guest wouldn't do. <laughs> this is something that a host would do. The person who had invited the person in, you know, he would usually take the bread and break it and pass it along. But this is what Jesus does. He takes the bread, and he breaks it, and he hands it to him, and, and he asks the blessing, and as he does this, guys, their eyes are open and they're like, oh, it's Jesus! And guys, it's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing that what happens. And guys, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Jesus, he disappears from their sight. And these two, Clopas and his friend, they beat it and they make it all the way back to Jerusalem. And they make it back to Jerusalem in time to tell Peter and John and all the other disciples. And they're telling them, oh, oh my goodness, this is what happened. We were on this journey and Jesus, he was right there with us. And then you can imagine how excited they must have been. Oh my word. Guys, can you imagine it? How upside down that must have been. Guys, here's the thing. Okay, <laughs> we know, you and I, we know that Jesus, he is alive. Those guys, they, they were having their doubts and Jesus, he was telling them, no, 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 I am. I am alive. I am well. Guys, here's the thing. They knew. Those guys, after they saw, after they, they, after their eyes were open, they saw Jesus for who he was, they knew that they had to tell everyone about what had happened. Guys, they were all, all of them, uh, Clopas and his friend, the disciples back in Jerusalem, they were all amazed to discover how much bigger God's story was than what they had expected. They were all amazed because, you know, just a week before, they were thinking that, that things were going to turn out, you know, a certain way. And now, they turned out this way, and it was so much better. Guys, I cannot imagine, you know, the feelings, the thoughts that were going through their hearts. Uh, Clopas, the guy who was, who was, who was on the, the road to Emmaus, he said, our hearts, they were burning within us as he was telling us, as he, as he was explaining the scriptures to us. And guys, I hope, you know, that as you look back over, you know, all of the things that we've learned, you know, from August up until now, I hope that as you look back over that, that your hearts are burning within you as you kind of think about how Jesus was there and how they all pointed to Jesus and how he had to be born, how he had to suffer, and how he had to die for us so that we could have a relationship with God. Guys, I hope that that's where you're at. But guys, here is the thing. Even though I know how the situation turned out over here and how it didn't turn out like this, God's story, God's story is so much bigger than what you or I can expect, than what you or I can imagine. And guys, that is our bottom line for today. Our bottom line for today is this, is there's always more to discover about God's plan. Guys, that's why it, it, is, it, it is such a big deal for us to have humility and not to put ourselves, because remember, this is the definition of humility, okay? Putting others first by giving up what we think we deserve. Guys, there is no better example of that than Jesus. Guys, he was the ultimate example of humility for us. And 
part of the reason why we need to have humility in how we treat others and putting others first is because, man, when we do that, God opens our eyes. A lot of the time, God opens our eyes to seeing how life is not about putting us first. It's not about having that first turn on the video game system. It's not about us, you know, uh, choosing, you know, what to, what show to watch or what movie to watch or whatever. It's not about us, you know, choosing what clothes to wear or anything like that or what to eat for 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 dinner. Even though, you know, it might seem at the time, man, I got to choose what we had for dinner. I got to do that. I got to have that first turn on the video game system. You know, we can have so much fun doing that. Guys, when we put others first, when we put others first, we get to see something really, really special. And sometimes we don't get to see it, sometimes we do. Sometimes we get to see the joy that other people have on their face. And when they see that we have given up something that, that, that we should have gotten, so that we put them first. Because guys, you know why that's special? You know why? why you have a good feeling in your heart, you know, inside, when you see that happen, it's because that's what God did for us. It's because that's what God wants for us. It's because that's, that's how God made us. Guys, uh, here in a second, here in a second, we're gonna worship God through song, okay? And uh, the songs that we sing today, um, I'm not sure that we sing that we have sung the first one, okay? But it is a really good song, and so I hope that you will you will get the gist of it and you'll sing along. The other one, uh, we sang it last week, and we'll sing it again this week. It's called "We Are Royals," and "We Are Royals," man, that's a song about who you are. That song is almost ripped straight out of scripture. It is so awesome to me. It's one of my favorite songs right now. And I hope, uh, we sang it at Superstar, but I hope that you'll sing along with us as we sing that one. Because guys, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a line in there that goes, you know, we are daughters, we are sons. More than mortals, we are royals. And guys, that's who we are. You guys are part, uh, those of us who believe, I should say, in Jesus, we are part of something so much bigger than we can imagine. We're royals. And so guys, I'm going to turn you over to the song and we're going to worship God uh, with our voices. And so sing loud, but just like we learned last week, don't just sing loud, live loud. Put others first and see how much bigger God's plan is than what we can see. See you guys next week. You guys have a great week.
Don't wonder where we belong 